Good morning, everyone. Welcome to worship. It's lovely to be sharing together. And for those who may be watching online later, welcome to you also. I'm going to ask Faye now to bring our notices. Thanks, Faye. It's a beautiful day. Let's think about and talk about what's happening in this coming week or so. There'll be a men's dinner on Tuesday night, so if you're wanting to join in, men, you need to get in touch with Jason to by tonight. The details are in the bulletin. Light seekers, you've got a reminder of what you're doing this afternoon and other things that are happening are printed in your bulletin. Like things like the Buddy R day uh, weekend, next weekend, because it's holidays and um, things are happening. Next weekend is also a big market day sale here in Caboolture. So Saturday, Friday or Saturday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, if you've got not a lot on your program, you'd be very welcome to come along and help set up, pack up or even just be around for a chat with people who come. The new roster sheet is out for October through to, looks like, early in, into December. And so um, please collect one if you are a helper within our church area here. A very important one, the insert for your bulletin today has preaching options for 2024. Now, next Sunday here at 8.30 will be a combined service, Beechmere, Upper Caboolture and Caboolture all joining together. And after the service, we're asking you to allocate a little bit of time for the annual general meeting of the congregation, which is the three worship centre places. Now, this is important that you read and pray about these preaching options for 2024 this week, because next Sunday you will be asked to be voting on one of two options that are printed there. And please come with your thoughts and um, plans for, that you hope to be in place for next year. You realise that our preaching situation has changed with the retirement of Pastor Dave Gregg and so this needs a reorganisation. Please read it very carefully and think and pray. So also next week there'll be um, a health and vitality report um, and you have that already, but that will be on the agenda for the annual general meeting as well. We're welcoming Gra Reverend Graham Hine today and um, it's good to be in worship together, sharing God's love. We gather as God's people have done thousands of times before to celebrate his incredible love and the life he has given us. May our hearts and minds be attentive to God and his words to us. Let us place aside our cares, our problems and anything that would be a distraction from our worship and come with clear minds to focus upon God. Come, let us worship God who loves us, delights in us and desires our company. So let us worship together as we sing two songs. The first one is Let Us Sing to the God of Salvation, a great hymn of praise. Let's stand and sing. Let us sing to the God of Salvation. Let us sing to the Lord our God. Let us come to this house with thanksgiving. Let us come before the Lord and sing. Praise the Maker, praise the Savior, praise the Lord, our everlasting King. Every throne must bow before Him. God is Lord of everything. 
to God through this one. Blessed be your name in the land that is plentiful. Continue in worship as we bring our prayer of praise to God. Let us pray. 
O oh God, we praise you for the way you have journeyed with us and guided us through difficult situations in past times. And you have been there also in our most joyous times. You have not left us alone, but are constantly there for us even though we haven't always been aware of your presence. We are amazed that you, the great creator, all-powerful God, would even be interested in us, wanting to share in our everyday events. Sometimes we are almost breathless when we see your handiwork in the world around us. We cannot help but be in awe of you and all that you have provided for us. We thank you especially for Jesus, who showed us how to live and love. Thank you for his grace and mercy. Our words seem so inadequate when our hearts are so full. Accept the praise we offer. Amen. Now it's time for our kids session. Thanks, Bev. Welcome. It's great to see the children with us this morning. So we're on school holidays. Woohoo! That'll be great. Well, I hope you have a very special time. And we remember those girls and boys who are not with us today and young people. Some of them are camping, some are travelling, but we just pray for safety for wherever they are. Yes, Kimba? Me and Emma and Chloe get to go to a party and then to our friend Byron's house. That'll be exciting. We hope you have a special time. Well, do you like sport? Yes, there's all sorts of sports, isn't there? <laughs> all sorts of sports. Now, we know that Zane and Kim like Brisbane Lions. We know that Joy is a great sports fan of whatever it might happen to be, cricket, whatever it might happen to be. If you're a Brisbane Lions fan, at the moment, you're, you'd be quite happy. If you're a Port Adelaide person, well, you'd be feeling a bit down in the dumps. And I'm sorry, I'm not an NRL fan, so I don't know where they're going, but there's all different sorts of sports, isn't it? And we've got volleyball, Faye's granddaughter down in Bendigo, Lily with volleyball. So there's all sorts of sports that we can play, we might have played, or we are currently interested in, or are still playing. Well, if you're a soccer player, if you're a soccer player, And this colour card is held up to you. I wonder what that might mean. You've done something silly, yeah. Something dangerous. Something you've been given a warning that it's unsportsmanlike. One warning. Now, if you happen to do that again or something similar, you're given this card plus this card. Red. What does the red one mean? You're sent off the field. You certainly are. You're gone. All right. Now, if you're a baseball player, you're given three strikes and you're out. If you happen to be a basketball player, depending on which league you're playing in, you can be given five or six fouls and then you're out of the game. Now, I wonder how many times 
you think that perhaps if we do something wrong or someone does something wrong to us, I wonder how many times we should forgive that person. Now, one, two, three. Well, it's a difficult question to know how many times we should forgive someone. One day, Jesus, one of Jesus' disciples, Peter, went up to Jesus and said, so how many times should I forgive? Now, he thought that a good number would be, let's have a look, seven times. But Jesus had something else to say. And we read it in our Bible, so we don't have to guess how many times Jesus says that we're to forgive someone because he's got it written in here and it's hard. Because Jesus says seven, or Peter says seven, and then Jesus says 70 times seven, forget your fingers going. We want to do 70 490. All right, so we're going up now to 490, but we're going up in tens. Ready? It would. Now, that's a lot of, lot of times. In other words, what Jesus is trying to tell Peter and us that we forgive people on and on and on and on and on. It's countless. It's never ending. That's how God forgives us. He forgives us when we come to God and say we are sorry and truly sorry in our heart. He just keeps on forgiving. And that's what Jesus wants us to do. Now, we know that that is really, really hard. Really hard. And so we need to pray to God and ask God to help us to forgive people who do wrong things to us. Let's have a prayer. Dear Father God, we thank you for Jesus' teachings. We thank you that you forgive us over and over and over and over and over and it is never ending. Please help us to forgive others who hurt us and do wrong things to us. We can't do this by ourselves. We ask for your help. Amen. We've got a few activities just in the back of the hall because it's uh, school holidays, so we're not out the back, but we will be just doing a few things on the table if you'd like to join us. Thank you. Well, how appropriate after hearing that that it's time for our prayer of confession. So let's come to God firstly in silence and make our own personal confessions and then we will pray together. Let us pray.
Let us pray together. Holy God, we, you see us as we really are, not how we want others to see us. Clean up the messes we make of our lives and the parts we play in the brokenness of the world in which we live. Forgive us and change our ways so that we may become the people you intended us to be, living and loving as Jesus loves us. Amen. And isn't it assuring knowing that God does forgive us over and over again after what we've just heard? He loves us and we know that he forgives us and so we can say together, thanks be to God. Amen. Let's now bring our gifts to God. Some of us may have given online or may uh, want to give electronically down the back. Um, but whichever way we give, it, isn't, it doesn't matter to God, I'm sure. We can give our gifts to him. generous God we thank you and we praise you that you care for us so deeply we come now with our gifts to say thank you and to offer with them ourselves to be used for your kingdom's sake here in this place and wherever the need arises we pray that you will accept these gifts and use them for your kingdom amen Let's join together in singing another lovely song, Beauty for Brokenness. If you're able to stand, feel free to do so, but if not, remain seated. Children, just as joy be, son. 
Thanks, Kathy. We'll bring us our scripture. Good morning, everybody. Today's reading is taken from 2 Corinthians chapter 6, 24 to 25. And I'm just going to read an introduction to that reading. In the 9th century BC, God's people, Israel in Samaria, are besieged by an all-powerful Assyrian army. God's people in the city are desperately suffering from starvation and poverty. Outside the city walls are four men with leprosy. In their hopeless situation, they decide to seek mercy from their enemy. When they enter the enemy's army's camps, they make an amazing discovery. You'll hear what this discovery is from the scripture reading now. Famine in besieged Samaria. Sometime later, Ben-Hadad, king of Aram, mobilized his entire army and marched up and laid siege to Samaria. There was a great famine in the city. The siege lasted so long that a donkey's head sold for 80 shekels of silver and a quarter of a cab of seed pods for five shekels. Now, there were four men with leprosy. At the entrance of the city gate, they said to each other, Why stay here until we die? If we say we'll go into the city, the famine is there. And if into the city, the fa- and we will die. And if we stay here, we will die. So let's go over to the camp of the Arameans and surrender. If they spare us, we live. If they kill us, then we die. At dusk, they got up and went to the camp of the Arameans. When they reached the edge of the camp, no one was there. The Lord had caused the Arameans to hear the sound of chariots and horses and a great army, so that they said to one one another, Look, the king of Israel has hired the Hittite and Egyptian kings to attack us. So they got up and fled in the dusk and abandoned their tents and their horses and donkeys. They left the camp as it was and ran for their lives. The men who had leprosy reached the edge of the camp, entered one of the tents and ate and drank. Then they took silver and gold and clothes and went off and hid them. They returned and entered another tent and took some things from it and hid them also. Then they said to each other, What are we doing? What we're doing is not right. This is a day of good news and we are keeping it to ourselves. If we wait until daylight, punishment will overtake us. Let's go at once and report this to the royal palace. So they went and called out to the city gatekeepers and told them, We went into the Aramean camp and no one was there, not a sound of anyone, only tethered horses and donkeys, and the tents left just as they were. The gatekeepers shouted the news, and it was reported within the palace. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let's pray. Lord God, we're thankful that you're ready to speak to us at any time. We thank you for the inspired word of God. We're thankful for the help of the Holy Spirit to understand what you would want to say to us. Bless us then this morning with an understanding of your word, your purposes and your plans for our lives. We ask this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Good news. Those men with leprosy had good news for the people in Jerusalem. And you might remember also 
a parable that Jesus told, a very simple story about a man who had lost one sheep. And though he had 99, he was concerned about this one sheep and he went and found it. So what happened when he found it? He came home rejoicing and also calling his neighbours to tell them, my lost sheep is found. Well, when was the last time you had some good news? I wonder. Was it another great-grandchild that gave you that joy? Or was it the specialist report, that growth? We're pleased to say it's benign. Good news. Or perhaps the family member who was out of a job for some months They have a job. That's good news. We want to tell somebody. Or perhaps your noisy neighbour next door to you is moving. So immediately you want to tell the other neighbour your good news. Or it might be simply you won bingo through the week. Well, good news. I'd like us to refer to this story back in second kings about these four men with leprosy to see what we can learn about good news that we have as God's people. And so there's just, uh, say, three. I want to put three foundational elements to you this morning about the foundation of sharing good news. The foundation to sharing good news. And here's the first. It's a realisation of personal blessings. Well, we see that the men who had leprosy certainly realised, look, we have good news. Unexpectedly, they had walked into this camp that had been deserted, the army camp, and there was a treasure trove of everything they wanted. There was clothes and food and equipment and tents. And this was a tremendous surprise to them. They possessed good news. Well, let's think about being a Christian and good news that we have. What good news do you have as a Christian? What would you say? If somebody asked you, what's your good news? Because you are a believer in Jesus Christ. Well, let's let's say first of all, you do know Jesus. You know him, you trust him, you've accepted him. Well, this is what the word of God says, and this is the testimony God has given us eternal life. And this life is in his son. Whoever has the son has this eternal life. So what is this eternal life about? Well, first of all, it means that you've received the grace of God. You've accepted the grace and love of God. God loves you. His grace has reached out to you in the person of Jesus. We talked about forgiveness this morning here to the children. When we think of eternal life and what it means, it means We are forgiven. We're forgiven of all of our past sins because of what Jesus Christ did on the cross. But not only past sins, the present sins which we struggle with right now, we're forgiven of those. And would you believe it, in God's grace, all those sins that we're going to commit in the future, they are forgiven already because Jesus Christ had paid the price. Well, we're talking about eternal life. We're talking about not only life after we depart this world, but we're talking about a quality of life because of the cleansing from guilt. There's no condemnation for those who believe in Jesus Christ. This is good news. Sometimes we don't realise it. We don't stop and think, now, what does it mean that I believe in Jesus? When we talk about a hope of heaven, that's not wishful thinking. 
It means there's a com confident expectation. It's because of the promise of Jesus. What about when you believed the Holy Spirit entered your life? Every believer, every believer here who's accepted Jesus Christ has been born again because of the regeneration of the Holy Spirit in your life. And he hasn't departed. And we're members of God's family. We belong to God. Wonderful news. This is what the psalm writer had to say. He believed he had some good news in his trust in God. I proclaim your saving acts in the great assembly. I do not seal my lips, Lord, as you know. I speak of your faithfulness and your saving help. This morning I'd like us to think not only of sharing in the great assembly of the congregation to which we belong, but I want us to think about a challenge of speaking out our faith to the great assembly outside there. That's where we're going. Good news means to be declared because, here's the second thing, a recognition of the plight of others. Well, what do we mean by that? We shouldn't keep it to ourselves, the four men with leprosy said. They wanted, well, they remembered what was happening in the city. People suffering from starvation, destitution, desperation and despair. And these four men were convicted of the heart. We should share our good news with them because of their plight. Whoever has the sun has life. But what about those who do not have the sun? This is serious, isn't it? Whoever does not have the Son of God does not have this life, does not have that list of blessings that we've just looked at in the previous screen. Whoever believes in the Son has eternal life. There's that conviction, there's that promise. But whoever rejects the Son will not see this life and the wrath of God. The condemnation of God is upon them. This is the plight of others. <clears throat> In 1975, some of you would have been down at Tasmania. And when you went to the Hobart, to the city, you would have seen a bridge across from the west side of Hobart over to the eastern side of the Derwent River, the harbour. In 1975, there was a bulk carrier, Lake Illawarra, and it crashed into the pillars of that bridge. You might remember this. It took out three spans of the bridge. They just collapsed because of what this ship did to the pillars that lifted up the bridge. On the night of January the 5th, the Baptist church worker, his wife and two ch uh, children or sons were driving to the eastern shore after a barbecue at his brother's house. He's coming home. He's crossing the bridge. As we came onto the bridge, I saw all the lights go out. But that was all. The bulk of the bridge between us and what had happened probably blocked the sound so they didn't hear anything about the collapsing of the bridge. I remember thinking that there must be a blackout on the eastern shore. But when I saw the lights were on across the river, we were very wary enough, or we were just wary enough to be able to stop before they came to the edge of the broken bridge. Immediately after we did, a yellow kingswood came flying past us and disappeared over the edge. 
I heard a huge crash when it hit whatever it hit below. The lens got out and Murray tried to wave down another vehicle. He was trying to warn them of the disaster of the bridge that was broken. It accelerated past him and likewise disappeared over the edge. Another car rammed the back of their Holden, pushing it where it finished with the front wheels over the edge. Now, that man, Murray Ling, was desperately trying to save those people from rushing over the edge. There is a plight of people who do not know Jesus Christ. We have the good news. We have the good news to share. Jesus recognised the plight of people. When Jesus saw the crowds, he had compassion on them because they were harassed and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. There's a lot of people like that in our world, in our street. They are lost. They are astray from God. They are at risk, eternal risk. And you might remember what Jesus said to Zacchaeus at lunch. He said, the Son of Man came to seek and save the lost. That's the promise of Jesus. That's what he wants to do. And we are the people who know this good news. Okay, the last one. A resolution to proclaim good news. We have good news. We shouldn't keep it to ourselves. Let's go straight away and tell the others. Well, look. That is so too. And this is what they did. They did go. And uh, <clears throat> they went to the city to tell them. Now, it's interesting to read in the scripture why they went. What was their motivation? These four men with the leper said, well, we better go and tell those in the city. And you know why? They said, otherwise we'll be punished. For holding back, for holding back the good news. We'll be punished when they find out that we know all of what's in this camp. What about the motivation for us? What is our motivation? I tell you three things. The first one, the compelling love of Jesus Christ in our lives. This is what Paul wrote to the Corinthian church. He says, we are compelled by the love of Christ, to do what we do. We are controlled by the love of Christ. Now, that, that is at work in our lives too. Christ indwelling us by his spirit compels us to reach out, to do things that are not selfish. What about the commissioning of the risen Lord Jesus? This is what he said to his disciples. And, of course, being down through the church... Every church throughout the generations recognised that this is a call from Jesus Christ. Go into all the world and make disciples. Make disciples. Help them to follow me. Help them to know me. The commissioning of the risen Lord Jesus Christ. And what about the empowering of the Holy Spirit? Are we to do this ourselves? No. We're too scared, aren't we? We're too scared to do this. The empowering of the Holy, the Holy Spirit will help us, will prompt us, guide us, give us words. This is, this is the promise before Jesus departed from this earth. He said, when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, you will be my witnesses. You will be my witnesses. When the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit has come. The Holy Spirit is indwelling our lives to empower us, to give us courage, to equip us.
before I just give you these three, but I've got a story about, look, when you think about those four lepers, four, four men with leprosy, they were nobodies. They had been shut out of the city because of their leprosy. Nobody wanted them. They were despised and rejected. They were nobodies, but here they are with the wonderful news that will save the whole city. I wonder if there's any nobodies in this congregation. Nobodies. When we think of ourselves out there in the vast world being bearers of good news, are we nobodies? I've got a story. It's about a man called Stephen Davies. His father died when he was quite young and he thought his father was killed in an accident. However, in his teens, when he was 15, he found out that his father had committed suicide and that messed him up. Not able to cope with this, all my home life, I began using drugs, sex, rock and roll as my anthem. Well, by the age of, of 17, I was experimenting with heavy drugs and getting drunk to numb the pain. To escape the attention of the police, I moved to Townsville where my uncle owned a hotel, but my lifestyle didn't change. Although I believed in God as a youngster, to this point I'd never heard the gospel. One day, I noticed one of the cleaners reading the Bible. I asked her why she was reading the Bible, and Barbara said, God speaks to me through it. Thinking she was weird, I made a point of avoiding her. But one day, when she was cleaning my room, I was there, stoned, and watching Humphrey Bear on TV. Barbara nervously left me a small Bible with the comment, I should read it. I couldn't resist reading it, and even though I was stoned at the time, Time, I found Jesus through reading the Gospels. The reality of what he had said made sense. The events leading up to the crucifixion of the Lord really stunned me, and from that point on, I knew there was something special about Jesus. Stephen Davies became a Christian. Now, who helped him? A nobody. A hotel cleaner. We do know her name. Barbara. And she did, well, she was nervously. She nervously gave this man, this young bloke, stoned, watching TV, gave her a Bible. That changed that man's life. He actually became, would you believe it? Would you believe it? He became the director of Queensland of the Bible Society. The same man. And it all began with Barbara the hotel cleaner. Now, are there any nobodies here who could do a similar thing like that? Wouldn't it be great? Wouldn't it? I mean, it's amazing what God can do in our lives. Really amazing. Let's just see what this. Here's our three basic elements. Yes, we do have good news. We're personally blessed. Yes, we do recognise the others that there's a plight, there's a, a risk, people out of step with God, estranged. They are just messed up. Their lives are messed up with sin. What's our resolution? What's our determination? I wonder if there's a challenge to us. Look, this, speak, this message speaks to me too. In recent years, I want to do more about personal witness. Out there. Out there. We have good news and we shouldn't keep it to ourselves. Let's go straight away and tell. Well, if we put this resolution in practice, what does it mean? Let's keep, we, let's keep with Christ. Abide in Christ. Abide in Christ. That's, that's of supreme importance. You are related to Jesus Christ. He is your saviour and lord. 
be prayerful. There could be some person, some person where you have an influence and you could pray, help me, Lord, to speak to that person. Could one person, one person be on your prayer list? You want to bring them into the kingdom of God, to know Jesus. Could there be that one person that you know, that you could speak to, you could give a Bible, you could share your story with them? One person, pray about them. I use that great word, collaborate. I just thought I'd throw that in. But it really is saying, look, the Holy Spirit is working in our lives. Just keep in contact with him. Be aware of the Holy Spirit's help. Ask him to help you. Ask him to help you. Ask him to give you courage. Lord, give me courage to speak where I can. Help, help me to be like Barbara. And develop your skills in telling your story. You've got a story. How did you come to know Jesus Christ? When did it go? What, what happened to your life when you, you gave your life to Jesus Christ? What happened? How did it influence your life? How did it change your life? What new purpose and direction did it give to your life? Go and spread the good news. Have we got time for one more story? If I can find it. This is down, this, this person is Gillian, who belongs to the Berry Uniting Church. I think that's in New South Wales. Gillian couldn't bring herself to start her car. She just couldn't drive out of that hospital car park while the lady in the car next to her was sobbing her heart out. I wonder what you would do. Here's a lady right next to your car and she's sobbing her heart out. You could see it. Well, Gillian did. What do you do? Oh, poor lady, and off you drive. Well, Gillian didn't do that. So Gillian prayed and took a risk. She went over to the lady's car window, leaned her, her elbow on the sill and asked, can I help you? We're urged to say, are you okay, aren't we? Are you okay? Well, you could have said that to this woman. Gillian said, can I help you? Well, out poured the whole story from this lady, a perfect stranger until then, her daughter. Sharon's put herself in hospital because she's suicidal. She sobbed. Gillian listened for a long time, then offered to pray for Sharon and her mum. Yes, thank you. And Gillian asked the Lord for healing and purpose for Sharon. Well, Gillian has some maturity, doesn't she? to be able to do that and to have that, well, to be game enough, look, I'm going to pray for you. Would you like me to pray for you? And some of you have got that maturity as well. You've been along the way for many years. You know how to pray for a person. Next Sunday, two women were at the Berry Church looking for Gillian. They went to her home and after lunch, Sharon was led to the Lord. That was about eight years ago. And now Sharon has grown in the faith and completed a Christian counselling degree at Table College. Well, I wonder who you might meet this week. Who you might be able to help to know Jesus. I wonder who will be laid on your heart by God's spirit in you. Let's pray. Lord, you do challenge us. You know how comfortable we can be sitting in our church, how lethargic sometimes we are. We let things go by us, including people surrounding us. Help us, Lord, to be alert to your leading, to your prompting, to your encouraging. We pray through Jesus. Amen.
people in together and sing this wonderful song, Go Forth in His Name. We are His children through His suffering. bring our concerns to God. Let us pray. Let us think of people who are struggling in the world, people whose lives have been turned upside down by earthquakes, floods, wars. We think of people in our own community here. People who do not know you. Perhaps there are people who are lost. People who are wanting to have power over others. People who are feeling they are voiceless and have no power, people who are feeling hopeless. We think of families that have been disrupted and no longer care for one another. We pray for our own church family Those who perhaps are not well, not sure what the future holds for them. But Father God, we pour out our hearts to you with our love for you and love for one another. We pray that you will help us to be part of the answers even to perhaps to our own prayers to be bearers of good news, givers of hope, encouragers of others. We pray that you will go with us in all this that happens. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. I'd invite Graham to give us a blessing before we sing our blessing song.
his benediction would come from the letter to the Colossians and to us this morning. And let the peace that comes from Christ rule in your hearts. For as one, for as members of one body, you are called to live in peace. And always be thankful. Let the message about Christ in all its richness fill your lives. Teach and counsel each other with all the wisdom he gives. Sing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs to God with thankful hearts. And whatever you do or say, do it as representatives of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks through him to God the Father. The Lord be with you. Let's sing together this hymn as we go out. Colours of day dawn into the night. Colours of day dawn into the night. The sun has come up. The night is behind. Dawn into the city, into the street. Let's give the message to the people we meet. So light up the bar and let the play burn. Open the door, let Jesus return. He keeps up his spirit, let the fruit grow. The people of Jesus, let his love show. Go through the park, go into the town. The sun still shines on, it never goes down. The light of the world is risen again. The people of darkness are needing your friend. The light of the fire, let the flame burn. Open the door, let Jesus return. Keep seed of his spirit, let the fruit grow. Tell the people of Jesus, let his love show. Open your eyes, look into the sky. The darkness has come, the sun came to dawn. The evening goes on, the sun disappears. Jesus is giving his spirit is new. So light up the fire, let the flame burn. Open the door, let Jesus return. Take seed of his spirit, let the fruit grow. The people of Jesus, let his love show. Let's go and share in a cuppa. Have a great week. Is that the correct name? You are invited to pause the video at the start of each Bible reading and to open your Bible and read the reading presented. This will prepare you to answer each question. Reflecting on Scripture, connecting with life. What words would you use to describe a time when you felt most alive and energised. Acts chapter 2 verses 1 to 21. Luke begins, they were all gathered in one place. Imagine the whole church across our...